think we've all been doing a pretty good job of being physically distant lately, but not socially isolated. It's really important. And I wanted to extend my good wishes to the Walk With A Doc group for hosting these really important seminars virtually to help us stay connected and help us stay moving. I know for me personally, I've got to move, I've got to run, I've got to do a brisk walk. It's good for my mental health, it's good for my physical health as well. It really helps me get through these things. And I also wanted to congratulate and introduce Dr. David Sabger. He is the founder of Walk With A Doc. Hey, thanks for everything you do, Doc. And thanks for uh, this particular session, which is all about movement while we're going through a pandemic. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Sanjay. Um, this is a big honor because I'm a huge fan of your brilliant work and your work ethic. The guy's been to over 100 countries. So thank you for the honor for introducing our program. Today, I'm gonna to talk about five things we can do to prepare ourselves. Uh, David Sapgar, I've got my wife on drums holding the camera. Um, she did bring up masks before we came out and I am outside and I'm going to be six feet or more from people and personally, and a lot of these decisions are personal, um, I'm not wearing a mask outside, but inside, my family and I are definitely wearing masks and we're very appreciative to all of you who are too because what you're doing is you're protecting us by wearing it and we hope we're protecting you by wearing it as well. So I'll let that go. I am really excited. So Walk With A Doc has 100 reasons uh, to walk and during COVID, what we're trying to do now is prepare you for not only not getting the virus now, but if there are other surges, preventing that as well. So consider this like a, we're, we're, we're working to build your immunity and keep us all safe. So the first thing I wanted to talk about was LDL. And these are the bad cholesterol particles. And what these do, so we're at, yeah, just to break, we're at a favorite park of ours and my wife's walking backwards, thank you. So what LDL particles do, they're the bad guys. They're balls with spikes on them, not unlike Corona, right? But they're balls with spikes, they're not viruses, they're um, particles that lodge into the artery and what they do is they can dam up and cause heart attacks so what we're trying to do is lower those and what walking does is increase the large particles of the LDL which are good and lower the small dense particles of LDL, which are bad. Those are the bad ones. And walking can lower those by 17%. It will also decrease the absorption of LDL from our small intestine into our bloodstream. So all that's great, walking or any physical activity. And if we can do it for 150 minutes a week, that is huge those benefits are miraculous if we can get 150 minutes and if you can't that's totally okay but if it's something you can work up towards that's a goal so ldl hdl that's the second thing i want to talk about those are the good particles and those act as the garbage man they go and grab those balls with spikes off the arterial walls and bring them to the liver and get rid of them so the more HDL we can have, the better. And walking certainly increases that. Other things that can increase your HDL are um, fruits, vegetables, soluble, soluble fiber like oatmeal. Oatmeal is indeed good for breakfast, especially with fruit. And um, alcohol in moderation, not for breakfast. 
those are things that can really help. There are people coming in. I'm going to make sure I stay six feet away from them so I don't come out as a liar. Um, so that's LDL and HDL. We can increase our HDL by at least 5%, which doesn't sound like a ton, but it can make all the difference in the world because for guys, we like the HDL to be above 40, and for women, we want it above 50. And again, the higher, the better. So HDL. Third, I want to talk about blood pressure, the silent killer. It's called the silent killer because we don't really feel it, barely ever, but it can cause heart attacks, strokes, and heart failure. And walking is huge for lowering your blood pressure. And the way it works, it makes the heart this very efficient pump. So the heart's not pushing out with great force into the arteries. It's just cool as a cucumber, doing its job, and it really lowers the blood pressure. And walking can lower our blood, plesh, blood pressure by like up to nine millimeters, which is as good as a lot of medicines. And I haven't met a single patient that likes taking medicines, myself included. So the less medicine necessary, the better. So three was hypertension or blood pressure. Number four, it can lower our risk of heart attacks. We've been seeing in the news all the time that those of us that have heart disease are at significantly increased risk of getting COVID. Well, we can lower our heart attack risk by 86% with five simple steps. So exercise or, or walking is, is one of them. Number two, not smoking. Number three, a healthy diet. Lots of fruits and vegetables. As you can see, I have an avocado on my shirt. We are really excited to partner with the Haas Avocado Board. And the reason is, first I love avocados, but what they do now, a lot of us are going to comfort food. I've seen a few patients that have gained weight during the quarantine. We all like comfort food. Avocados can provide that comfort food and they're nutritious. So fruits and vegetables as part of a healthy diet. Other things um, in addition to not smoking and physical activity would be um, alcohol in moderation. So those, you know, in the study, the patients in this study out of Sweden in 2014, they had 10 to 30 grams a day. You can look that up, but it equates to about a drink or two. Actually, it was a positive thing there, but we don't want you to start drinking if you don't. And then the final thing there is maintaining a healthy weight. So if you do those five things, the people in that study had an 86% lower incidence of heart attack. We, we wanna keep you out of the hospital and that will really help with that. And then finally, the fifth thing of our list of 100 that I wanna talk about is lowering your risk of stroke. If we go for a brisk walk, walk. we're not walking briskly now because I don't want my wife to walk into a tree. But if you're walking briskly for 30 minutes, five days a week, you lower your stroke risk by 24%. If you decide you wanna lower your stroke risk by almost half or 46%, if you walk briskly for an hour, five days a week, you can do that. So I really appreciate you guys being with us. If there's anything I didn't touch on that you have questions, my email is david at walkwithadoc.org. And again, thank you Sanjay for the huge honor and have a good day.
That is so cool. It's my dog. It's your joke? Let me my dog. Yes, please. I have a rock. I have a dog. Rock in the dog. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that is a great joke. I'm thinking, I'm thinking. That's right.